The future is grim. We are on the verge of a healthcare apocalypse that will go and send us back into the dark ages. It's up to you to lead the fight and help save mankind. That kind of sounds like the blurb of our new game. The real thing is that's actually real life. That's what's happening to our healthcare systems. I'm Rachel, I'm the CEO and founder of AppAttic. We're a medtech games company. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is games, wellness and wearables, and how we can revolutionise the healthcare system. I'm Deadly Toes, if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's generally how I interact with most people. If you do follow me, I just want to see. If you do follow me, be warned, that's what it looks like. I like cats, I play games, I spend time with my family, and I do try to exercise uh, when I can. But probably the most important thing for you is the, my background. Um, I'm pretty much a nerd. I've been CTO, software architect, lead techie, chief nerd, whatever you want to call me, in many companies. I've created over 400,000 actual mobile apps. I've architected them with our app builders. That was my original background. So I'm a real mobile fan, originally apps, um, and now more in the games. Medtech was always uh, my personal interest, mostly because I want to be healthy and I'm not healthy, and I want my family to be healthy, and it's tough. Um, I spotted the opportunity a few years ago for games rather than apps and wearables and that's kind of where we are right now. To give you context, we're a revenue driven company, uh, we're profitable, we haven't had to take investment so it's working out so far for us. Um, I'm a big wearable fan, so much so I've got two on me. I'm guessing maybe one or two of you are useful. I have lost the mic. Um, maybe aren't wearable fans, but I'm guessing one or two of you have wearables. And the idea is, if I'd said that to you 12 months ago, or two years ago, or three years ago when I was using wearables, you would have maybe thought I was a bit crazy. Um, uh, people in my industry were telling me it's a fad. Wearables are great, we have all this data. But even if you aren't a wearable fan, we all have mobile devices. And the great thing that I love about our mobile devices and our actual wearables is they actually know your real you. Someone said to me once they know more than your spouse. They know exactly about your physical health, your general activity, your mental well-being. Sorry, I just noticed that my slides normally look a wee bit prettier. Something's obviously happened in translation, but that's okay. Um, so they know all this information about you. They're always with you. And uh, as a healthcare professional or someone who's looking after your health and wellness, this is vital information. But there's a really massive problem. Who cares? Who cares? Most people don't care. I wear my wearable and lots of people do, but do you really care what this means? Does your doctor care? No, your doctor doesn't have time. This is just data. It's lots and lots of raw data. They need it as information. So I'm just going to put a caveat in that that first problem is something that we have solved or are solving in the company. And I'm not going to talk about it today, but we are able to send the data to your clinician. I'm really talking about how we engage the end user through games so we actually have data for the clinician. And the big problem is that people wear wearables, but they aren't engaged. They, we need to hook them in. We need to hook them in to keep giving us that data, keep them engaged, that whole idea of retention. And when we have them in, how do we get them to make a change? How can I be more active? How can my biggest issue is I eat crap and sleep three hours a night? How do I make that? How do I make that change? So it's very much um, a problem for me. And I think that a lot of us all have our own issues, whatever we might want to solve. Um, and a few years ago when I was making apps and uh, in this space that I really realized that games are way more engaging. Games genuine mobile games and if we're generating all this data from mobile phones why don't we keep the user on the mobile devices so I'm going to suggest today that the answer to those two last problems are actual games and that's very much where my company sits and what I'm going to chat to you today is really about what we've been doing over the last two years, the mistakes we made, how we're making it better, and the engagement that we actually have with the NHS in the UK and the Department of Health in the UK, and how they're actually embracing this, and this is quite a new market. Um, so when I say healthcare and I say games, everybody always thinks that I am talking about gamification. It's beyond that. Yes, that's where we start out. Gamification is leaderboards and badges, and anyone in the, who has a Fitbit or Microsoft, you all know the challenges, you all know that 
you compete with your co-workers, there's all these kind of things. It's gamification. It has its place, but we think it's quite superficial. And we're researchers at trade, and we know this, and we've looked into it. And we actually team up with some very smart people, much smarter than me. They're still academics, so they definitely are smarter than me. Um, and they have been able to help us figure out that it has to go beyond gamification. We need to create a real game. And that game needs to be these six things. It needs to be fun. We need to structure the fun so that people can actually find a challenge and make an impact. We need to give them relevant and timely feedback. It needs to be social, and if it's social, they need to have an identity. So you're all game developers. Caveat is, I didn't start out as one. So the idea is that maybe this is obvious to you, less so to us, but more importantly, this isn't just about making a fun game. This is actually about making a game that makes an impact. These are the things that we know that are going to help us change something. And that's what we're really in. So when we're making our games, this is kind of like our roadmap. Every time we add something, do something, does it hit this criteria? Does it add to it? So what I'm going to talk now about is an actual game that we made. Um, and it's called BitRun. Uh, BitRun very much started out as a research prototype. And the original concept was uh, I love my Fitbit. I had one of the first Fitbits. And I wanted to do something really interesting. I wanted to train that data that you see on the left. I think that was my first day in Vancouver at the weekend while I was writing these slides. And translate that into an actual game. Not just gamification, I wanted to play the data. And um, what we did was create a runner game. Made sense, steps, runners, not too big of an abstraction. And that's pretty much what we did. Research prototype, the company had some funding, uh, some revenue, that's what we threw it into. Um, and we just made it data-driven, or data-driven, um, whatever you want to say, that all games are data-driven. They, well, however we generate levels, how we interact with each other, it's all data. We just got the data from somewhere else. So we were using steps, universal sign of activity. We were using activity, actually, how you were exercising, how heavily you were exercising. Was it a light jog? Was it quite intense? And then sitting. So steps and activity are positive things. We would reward them. Um, steps got points. Activity became collectibles in the actual game world. And then we determined when you were sitting, when you were being sedated. Maybe you've heard the phrase, sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is bad, that we should be walking around at least two minutes, maybe 250 steps per hour. And this is where we would penalise you by adding in extra obstacles. So if you sat a lot during the day, the game was pretty much rock hard and very difficult to complete. And that was our first iteration of the game. Um, really simple. Um, didn't take overly too long to develop. But while we were developing, we had to have these considerations that while we were using the data to generate the game, we had to keep thinking, we want to generate change. So when I went to the game devs, they'd be like, right, you were very active today. Um, so that means we want to speed up boost. Speed up boost actually made the day game difficult. So we're making the game difficult for people who are doing well. So we always had to think back, is this making sense in our grand scheme and our grand plan? The other thing is our game devs were going to their own research into health and wellness, that everybody should be taking 10,000 steps and eating this and doing that. We're in healthcare. Healthcare is personalised these days. 2,000 steps for one person might be fantastic, and 8,000 steps for someone else might not be that great. We need to be able to personalise it. So no, we were really against society's norms, and we still are. And that sort of leads into us to accessible for all. The game had to be very accessible because some of our demographic is over 65. They're on medications, they have mobility issues, and um, there was a brilliant talk earlier on about accessibility. And that's kind of what we were keeping. One touch, simple touch, taking that into consideration at the same time. So that's kind of all that we did for the first version. And uh, to be honest, it wasn't that simple. We made mistakes. These are just some of them um, I thought I would highlight. First of all, I'm medtech, I'm a researcher, I made mobile apps. How difficult could it be to make a game? Not so. Um, so it was health was the main focus for me. And I really brought in the really key game designers and developers into it. I had already made some of the key decisions. And to be honest, I shouldn't have been making them. It's OK to stick with a runner. That was a good decision. We've, we've worked through that. Um, but ultimately, they should have been in much earlier. I also put behaviour first. I was so focused on the research of how do we actually make change. I kind of forgot this is a game people need to want, first of all. So the idea is that we can make change if we get you involved, but we had to get you involved. So we kind of forgot that. We put that way too up high up the list before engagement. 
And then there is this lack of cohesion. It's, it's actually much more difficult to get sort of this kind of health app game thing to mix, get our messages just right uh, without feeling a bit too clunky. And that, that was a real issue too. There's a few other things that didn't make the slide along the lines of we didn't think too much beyond retention of 30 days. Um, sort of because we were doing it as a research prototype, we didn't have as much time to add those features in. But that kind of idea that we did make mistakes and we learned from them. But the really good thing is even though we made mistakes, people bought into it. Um, the Department of Health in Northern Ireland, the NHS, is loving what we're doing. They see the real need. They see we did tests, we had user groups, people were engaged. The initial tests were so good that we have continued along this path. We have revenue from our game, so we're able to do this. And we're able to address all the issues that we might have had the first round round. And so about 12 months ago, to address all these issues, I started to create this kind of well-rounded team. We were very techy, very research-focused, but techy light on the game side. So now we have three main teams. We have the research team, kind of headed up by me, CEO, whatever, lead techie kind of on that side of things. We have a game dev side, so we have the person who runs all our game development or game design and he's the lead guy. And then we have the user side of things. So we have this advocate for the patient or the person who's going to be the end user. And every decision we make, all three of us come together. I have to say having an odd number is kind of cool because it means there's no stalemates. So if we, we do have doctors and nurses that input into it, but we kind of keep them outside the process and just let them feed in. And that's sort of how we work. And we kind of updated our process. It's much more complex than this, but the idea is that on the left-hand side, we have our six key factors that our game must be. And then the right-hand side is the game kind of health outcomes for that game. So it might be people to take their medicines on time and better, maybe people to check their blood pressure, to eat better, to exercise more, to sleep better, whatever it is, we need to have those and they need to match up. And every decision we need to make needs to go through that and check at every point. If you let it go too long, they'll end up being out of sync and that's a big thing. And we do that through fantastic communication. So in this instance, I was losing clearly and these two were ganging up on me, but that's the whole point. You know, we aren't, we're kind of free enough to disagree with each other. We're free enough to be able to say, no, I don't like that and give our reasons. And that's kind of the way the company works. Our current status is that we are developing current 2.0 of two games. One game is Bit Runs, the one about getting people to be more active. And the other one is a medicines management app or game, shall we say. The idea is that we're encouraging people to take their medicines on time, um, actually take them, and even tell us when they're not taking them, why they're not. And this becomes an entire game world. They compete against their cohorts. So if you have COPD or diabetes, you're actually competing against against people who have the same kind of condition. So you have that kind of camaraderie as well. So we're pretty much developed on both of those. September-ish releases, um, probably the biggest thing for us is that we actually do clinical trials. Our clinical trials go through ethical approval the same way a new drug would. So we are really stringently checked um, in the NHS. It's not pretty, it's not pleasant, to be honest, but we do it because we need to prove that what we're doing actually makes a difference. Otherwise, we're just making another game. And um, to be honest, if we were just relying on that, I'm not totally sure my company will be around this time next year. So we really need this clinical validation. And the NHS have bought into it. Uh, we're at the process of just rolling out the trial for the medicines um, management um, game. And the kind of bit run is we're going to be trialled later in this year. Um, it'll be trialled with younger adults and the medicines management is probably 18 to 65. So we do have a quite diverse range. And the best way to describe this is it's like a year-long, very intensive focus group with lots of data, because we've written our own data analytics. So we know all about these people and their lives, what they do, what medical conditions they have. We see them all the time. So it's probably the most in-depth focus group we'll ever get. And they have no attachment to us or them, so they'll be pretty horrifically, brutally honest, which is probably we can't even buy that kind of feedback. So it's really, really great, even from us and from a game development side. So we're really happy. And most importantly, the NHS 
that's the Department of Health. We are really supportive with They have bought into this. So this, they see games as a potential solution. They see games as a potential solution, but because that we came from that background, we have that kind of academic credibility, we've researched it, and we're kind of brought all the right stakeholders together. So we know earlier, I kind of give you the doom and gloom of the future's a bit grim. In all honesty, if you read my Twitter, I think the future's really bright. And part of what I want to do is create that kind of bright tomorrow and the, the bright future that we have. And I think the future is really bright for games. If you're a game developer now, there's all these diverse new markets out there. There's health, there's defence, there's data processing. Games are being used for all these wide variety of things. And um, the key tip is that you need to have the expertise in those areas to use games. But if you can, there's actual revenue. So from a small company with nothing else behind me, we went straight to revenue, which is nice. And um, we're able to expand our team. We haven't had to take investment. We're getting really good backing uh, from our customers. So that's really, really good. So I think the future is bright if you can work out these markets and get into them uh, and do it well and validate it. The other thing is that I think there's this kind of idea of a game app hybrid. Some of ours sort of are half appy because we have to track some things. And then they have this game element. And we've noticed that Unity, we use Unity, and it has more UI kind of elements coming in, which is great, so it means we can continue on with them. So it's this kind of hybrid thing, and it's something that we struggled with maybe a couple of years ago, and we see that games are going there, but it's a slightly different development style. And um, VR, AR, I'm kind of glad I added this line in, like, yesterday, um, because, honestly, I'm not an AR or VR fan, I never was, and I've been denying it in the company for a long time, until recently. And do you know what changed my mind? It wasn't just experience in it. Last week, before I came away, I was chatting to some of the senior health officials and they gave me a couple of problems. And I've been, while well, I was on my very long flight, I've been thinking about solutions. Because we use games as a solution. It's not just about being fun. These are solutions to real problems. And then I went and tried the Vive and it clicked. The problem they were having, VR and AR actually could be a genuine solution. It's not just a case of using VR or AR for the sake of it or making it fun. It actually could provide a genuine solution. So now I'm convert. So I emailed the guys back at home and said go buy all that stuff that I said no to <laughs> after GDC. So they're a very, very happy team. And so I really do think the future is bright. But I just kind of want to land on this kind of end vision. This is actually our end vision. Because this is a games talk, I have gone very light on our med tech background and what we're doing. But we are collecting lots of data. It's not data about, it is data about user retention, all those kind of things. But we're using it for medical purposes. We think that by 2030, we'll all have personalized medicine. I'll be getting the right drug treatment for my genetics, for who I am, where I am, that point of life. But to do that, we need this kind of data that's floating around in my mobile phone, in my back pocket right now. We need it from the wearables, but we need to start collecting it now. And that's sort of where <coughs> my company has positioned itself. So yes, just chatting all about the games, we do have this really serious back-end system, and that's kind of where we fit into our 2030 vision for the future. Thank you. So as always, um, are there any questions at this point for Rachel? No, I, I, I'm going to jump in there. It, yeah. It's just something you alluded to at the <laughs> end, though. But uh, my partner's a psychotherapist, yes. and I didn't. I just wondered. Obviously, you mentioned VR, and whether you think there's a scope to use this sort of idea, but for mental health disorders as well. I think so. Um, one of the big themes that we have noticed, we very much focus on physical health at the minute. Yeah. Um, the requests that we are getting are very much our mental health. Yeah. And I think yes. And I think for us to, to answer that question properly, I would need the actual problem because no, we all problems. Yes. But I would say um, at a first glance, yes. And uh, the key thing is you need those experts in. And uh, maybe one of our future topics, I can't say. Yeah. More no, that. that's, <laughs> that's good yeah. to hear because okay. my partner agrees. So yeah. yeah. Um, any others? Yeah. We've got one here. What are you currently monetizing? Are you doing? It seems like a great model for a subscription. Um, yes, it's subscription, and the NHS or Department of Health or the UK government pay us physically, and they subscribe to it, and they take the games, and then they distribute it to people. So if that was in America, that's kind of like a healthcare provider buys a subscription and then puts it out to their people who they buy their healthcare. So it's not on the absolute. 
Um, we did a bit of testing with one of them, the bit runs on the App Store, uh, just to actually get some outside user data to help validate what we were seeing in the user groups. Um, we are heading towards that. Um, we do have really good revenue from our current customers, but we think public release and that kind of public-private kind of thing, there's a nice balance in there.